the Thames, but they were all rescued. And as we said earlier, the only major letdown so far has been the so-called River of Fire, which completely failed to live up to expectations. Organisers had said that a four-mile display along the Thames would be the centrepiece of the celebrations. You wouldn't know it, but apparently it did take place. The spokeswoman's claimed that it all went ahead, but admitted it may not have been quite as amazing as people had presupposed. Now, if it hadn't been free, we'd have been asking for our money back. Elsewhere... The... <laughs> OK. Now, anyone who's, anyone, anyone who's in showbiz uh, will tell you she's a cruel mistress who can take your long-held hopes and dreams of fame and dash them on the rocks of anonymity at any time. It's tragic. It is, though, isn't it? It is. It, is. it all builds you up, and that's it. Oh, God, God. First yeah, exactly. The public doesn't want to see a garden being done up much longer. Anyway, well, if Dame Showbiz can do it, so can we. It's time for As Seen On, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. 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 Yes, it's our regular talent show in which two acts will compete for the right to use the phrase as seen on the big breakfast in their advertising. A seal of approval that can only lead to bookings galore and maybe, just maybe, the big time. What? Wow. Big, big time. Big time. Oh, Thank you very much. Uh, such high accolades come at a price and the loser will be made to sign a legally binding contract Whoa. promising they will never claim to have been seen on the show. They have to sign that. The lawyers are down here. You know it's a tremendously miserable moment on the show. <laughs> Before we get on with this competition, we're going to have a quick look at some of last year's losers. Just some people signing away their rights to say, as seen on The Big Breakfast. Have a look at this, please, gang. The Big oh. Breakfast lawyer is coming in. Every week she gets ever more Left glamorous. Left uh, do, you want to, do you want to sign she it? She is a professional. Oh, you sign it. Uh, no, it has to be signed by you for I'm afraid. <laughs> um, Left-handed. Left-handed. Oh, <laughs> Thank you very much to the Big Breakfast Law. He's just signing that now, and he will never, ever be able to claim as seen on the Big Breakfast. Can we have, please, the Big Breakfast Lawyer in? Uh, we relish our appearances every week. Um, see, a very sharp attire. Probably, I would say, earns a few more quid than most people. <laughs> so there she goes, now getting him to sign. It's a wonderful moment, this, signing away the right to say as seen on the Big Breakfast. Oh, that's got to hurt. Ooh. Moving seats. OK, now, before we see today's act, here are the rules of combat. Uh, each act gets just one minute to display their talent to the nation. You, the viewer, can vote for the acts by phone. Act one, act two, or neither. The winner has the privilege to use, as seen on The Big Breakfast, in all future promotional material. The loser has to sign that legally binding contract live on the show for Ben. <sighs> Ooh, quite a mouthful, boy. It's like Jack and Nori. Uh, so let's get on with the show, tonight's first act. Would you please welcome Melton Mowbray. Yay! There we go. There's Melton. Stand by your equipment. Uh, do you know what? Ms. Tarbuck's going to tell us a little bit about Melton Mowbray before he starts his act. Ms. Tarbuck, tell us about Melton. You are absolutely right, John Ball. And Brian Horton, who now goes under the name of Melton Mowbray, was first thrust into the limelight at a very early age when he won first prize at a Royal Drama Festival in the 60s. His biggest ever gig was in front of 4,000 people in Thailand where he broke his sword walking record of 29 swords. He's been performing with his glamorous assistant Julie Evans for 49 years. <laughs> That's a lie. I meant to say nine. OK. Thank you very much, Lisa. But... Do you know what? I'm having a laugh now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind warning you. Bang gong. No, I won't. Get it I, on. I prefer the bigger one. <laughs> Sorry, oh, an, an old T-Rex fan. Yeah. John, wow. you give away your age. Oh, no. OK, here we go. <laughs> uh, Melton Mowbray, you know the rules. Uh, Quentin Wilson, are you excited? Absolutely. <laughs> Let's have a comment from a pr proper comment from you, Quentin. Well, we have television first all over the place. We've got the Millennium ba Baby. We've got people streaking in Barnsley. And now, what, what is going to happen? It's unbelievable, isn't it? <laughs> it's, you've really I'm privileged to be here. Thank you me? very much. Quentin Wilson, his words. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Do you know what? We've got 45 seconds on the clock. Uh, the clock. Uh, let's have that 45 there, please, now. Melton Mowbray, are you ready? Go! Oh, Whoa! Thanks wow. for that. Woo! That's his own toenails.
phone room. Well, um, I'm going to go in the phone room as well to show you the setup now. Because I just say, if you are a child watching the show now, uh, if you're a child watching the show now, and your dad has got eight sabers knocking around and a specially adapted ladder uh, that goes up at one end, do not attempt to replicate that act. Uh, I'm going to go through the phone room. Lee, do you want to help me out in the phone room here? Thanks yeah. very much, Lee Evans. Appreciate yeah. that. Here we go. This is the phone room, the heartbeat here. Lee's going to be helping you out for a bit. Are you all right there, Lee? Yeah, sorry. I thought the... Uh, uh, oh, come meet the phone operators here. They're working yeah. all night. Uh, new number, 0208. Hey, oh, you're right. Uh, Hello. Uh, how you doing? All, right? all the ones. Uh, this is Lee Evans. Yeah, how, just, how, uh, how do you feel? Yeah, how do you feel? We're backstage yeah, now. Yeah, joking. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Trying, sorry. Yeah. You're waiting for the... Yeah. How, how, yeah. how do you feel that went for you, then? Sorry? How do you feel that went out? Yeah, that's fine. It was good? Fine. You're satisfied yeah. with that? Yeah, that's I mean, fine. What was your overall impression of that? Because people are going to be voting now. I thought it was uh, fantastic. A nice act. Uh, yeah, I was, uh, I was, I was sat there in thrall. <laughs> you were, though, weren't you? In thrall? Yeah. In thrall? Yes. Yeah, you were really excited yes. about it. Well, well, seems to be the buzz on the phone already. Um, keep on parting Aberdeen. Keep on parting Aberdeen. Any, anything else? Any other messages at this time? <laughs> um, quite a few people have missed <laughs> seeing the <laughs> millennium due to illness being asleep. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so, you, so you can see, Lee, it's a wonderful place. It's, a, it's incredible. <laughs> OK, thank you very much. Uh, Lee Evans there, helping us out of the front. Thank you very much. Yeah. Lee, would you like to come back through the second act? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Wow. We're back in. Here we go. We're back in. OK, okay it's time for the next act. That was Melton Mowbray, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lisa Tarbuck will take you through the voting system a little bit later. But first of all, let's meet today's second act. This is my favourite name for any act. What are they called? Lynx. <laughs> oh, Welcome okay. to the show, Lynx! Yay! Wow! Wow! Oh, wow. Nice. Oh, oh, happy New Year! She's won! <laughs> there we go. Uh, Lisa, would you please tell us more about Lynx? I sure will, Johnny. Lynx, alias Lynn Loughton, is truly an international performer. A unique blend of magical Illusions, audience participation and stunning outfits has thrilled audience as far as field as Bosnia and Central America. She's a particular favourite with the royal family, the armed forces and has been performing as Lynx for nine years. Wow. Absolutely wow. right, thank you. Performing as Lynx. As, as no. Lynx. Okay, there we go. Thank you very much, Lisa. You've really filled us in. Now, Lisa will be keeping time over at the bar. We'll be sticking very strictly to that 45 second rule. Any jokes, tricks, or turns after that 45 seconds will not count. Is that clear, Lee Evans? Uh, clear. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much indeed. Wow. Um, <laughs> Um, Lee, a comment about this before we start? Well, I think it's going to be a really interesting act. Um, oh, I must have touched uh, no, the floor. No, leave the cucumber. <laughs> yes, you know where it's leave been. the <laughs> Anyway, uh, yes, I'll, well, I'll watch and see what happens. OK, thank you very much indeed, Lee Evans, well, I mean, for that. What uh, can I say? Well, I haven't just, seen it yet. It's a, it's a pre comment <laughs> Oh, a pre comment Hang on, wait a second. I'm oh, well, getting I'm... the... I'm getting... Get on with it, they're saying. OK, oh, here we go. Yeah, I'm, uh, getting, I'm getting talk more. That's talk funny. more? That's funny. <laughs> Yes, I'm getting to talk more. What, what else? What else are you saying? Oh no, nothing. I'm getting and over to Johnny. I'm getting and over to Johnny. Okay, do you know what? Here is Lynx, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Lynx. Final column. Wow! Wow! Wait. Yeah. Linton, what, what did that feel like? Hey, that slightly. Oh, you good old man. Uh, Gail, uh, at one point there, you, you you physically recoiled. Does that sort of activity? What what do you think was particularly repulsive about what you just saw? Well, she cut through her oh. arm, and but you see, cut it off, and then she fixed it, and you get ladders in her tights. Uh, she couldn't fix them. How do you fathom that? How do you... I just. 
you know. Did anyone see how she did any of that? Bodily parts, yeah. you know, but. You did, Sonny. Thank you very much for that. No, Sonny! Do you know what, uh, Gail? Hold on, because Lisa's got those all important numbers. Here you go. If you would like to vote for act number one, Melton Mowbray in his funny old outfit, vote ring 0208 985 All the Ones. Or if you preferred act two, the lovely links there, call 0208 985 All the Ones. Alternatively, you may think that neither act is worth our endorsement. If that is the case, then you know what the number is 0208 985 All the Bloomin' Ones. Oh Please dial very, very carefully to avoid miscast votes. Lines will close in about 30 minutes, so get dialing. Time to go and see what that rash boy Bacon's up to, are they? Where are you, Rich? Thank you, Rich. Yeah, but, uh, live in Barnsley uh, tonight. You may have seen us earlier. We did uh, a first-class streaky bacon. Full nudity. Bitter. The whole lot. Uh, now, uh, we're at a late stage in the night now. Some of the parties are calming down. No. Uh, but also, no. <laughs> these people here, these, ha these haven't calmed down. Here's some people. Yeah, got lovely. Quiet, you quiet. saw our, our Millennium Streaky Bacon earlier. I know, I know this. Mr. Al Said. Oh, you enjoyed that. Oh, oh, yeah. well, Can we say oh, Happy New Year to Johnny and Lisa <laughs> from yeah, Blue. Blue. That, is, that is a lovely sentiment, and it's been nice talking to you on the show. I'm going to leave you outside. Uh, so here we are in a street in Barnsley. This is the party we gave crashed earlier. Now, things are quiet down here. People, well, it doesn't sound that quiet, actually. But the late stage in the night. Let's see how the party's progressing there. I think you can see some karaoke in the room there. And people said, I think I'll join you for a second. OK. Oh, baby! So, OK. Oh. Tremendous. It's a fancy dress party, viewers. Uh, that's... No, sorry, you are Shirley Bassey. Uh, and this is Madonna. Guys, can I talk to you a second? Have you, have you, have you had a nice uh, late stage in the night? Excellent. How, Indian, now, how are you feeling? Fine. Really? Yes. Have you still got some energy left in you? Good, yes. Are you going to see the night you there, Sailor Man? Yes. You're, yes. Quite frankly, you're looking the worst for wear. Where's the yeah. I feel absolutely shocking. Do you? I feel absolutely Will you make it till the end of the night? Oh, yes, I will. Good, OK. Yes, this gentleman here earlier uh, actually did a full naked streak. If you didn't see it, uh, then he missed a lot because he saw everything. Guys, I'm just going to pop up. Apparently there's some people in bed upstairs, aren't there? Is that right? Yes. Uh, let's pop up. We're going to go upstairs now. OK. All right. Which way? Which house, Madonna? This one up here? Yeah. Right to the top. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm tripping up the stairs. I've not had a drink. Madonna, which house? Is it this one here? OK, now, guys, we are, of course, past the wall shed. I must prepare viewers. We don't know what we're going to see when we go in here. I'm just going to fling open the door, OK? And in we go. And there, the sight of two people who've had enough of the night. Hello there, big breakfast in your bedroom. They are dead to the world. It's, I mean, guys, to be perfectly honest, it's only quarter past four. All right there? No? <laughs> Any response at all? OK, guys, well, it's been nice coming to the bedroom. Thanks, Madonna. If you want to join them in bed, that's absolutely fine. What we're going to do now is we are going to uh, leave this party. We're going to carry on broadcasting. The show's on until 9am. We're going to do a few other things. We're going to leave you guys now to settle down. Doesn't care! Doesn't care! Doesn't Thanks very much, Madonna. Care. That's it from us. The sight of the street we did earlier will never leave me. Care. Seeing those cheeks run down the road is a memory I'll probably never forget. Uh, that's it from us for now in Barnsley. Uh, back to the house. Thank you very much. Oh. That's a big shot. Just coming in there. That's a that. colossal shot really coming is. down here. Amazing. We find ourselves, I'm just going to take a few minutes out here in the calm of the shed. Isn't that nice? It's been it's a lot better. better. It's been so hectic. <laughs> we can just calm down in a shed, a real man's place. Now, I'm going to take my earpiece out just for a minute. How long have I got on this item? Thank you very much. Uh, Six minutes. Everyone, I'm just going to take it out. Just have a bit of quiet for a second. Now, everyone needs a hobby. Some people like to collect stamps. Others cherish a classic car or two. Now, I don't know if my next guest is well read, but I reckon bits of him probably are. Please welcome to the shed Les Jackson in his astonishing collection of vintage girly magazines. Uh, collector's Corner, it's meant to say. Collector's Corner. Okay, jingle, do it yourselves. Collector's Corner. Collector's Corner. Collector's Corner. Oh, there we go. Is that enough? There we go. Thank you very much for that. Good backup. Getting a bit sloppy now. It's quite slick early. Uh, just how big is your collection? Well, I've got an enormous collection of girly material, and <laughs> I've got over 10,000 items of just regular girly magazines. Regular girly yeah. magazines? Not just counting the rest. OK, just defining yeah. regular. They're basically pin-up magazines where people 
put them up as marred the female form, you know, no fetish element, no this, that, and the other. I wasn't saying there was. <laughs> oh, well, you know. No, well, you're bringing but, up uh, the fetishism a bit earlier there. How, yeah, yeah, exactly yeah. how comprehensive is your collection then, overall? What sort of things do you cover in that? Everything, really, right across the board. Um, but mainly, when it comes to girly mags, it was magazines that were sold Ooh. to the public or top shelves in their past or whatever, their equivalent to the man in the street who wanted to be able to admire the female form in his shed or, you know, somewhere private. Easy. Good shed reference, though. I like yeah, that yeah, I like to put that uh, How did you first get started then? What, what got you interested? Well, it's well, pretty obvious, but how did you well, start when connecting I, them? When I was a young reading? lad, there was very little on offer. And I always remember <laughs> going to a show like this. This was the Crazy Gang, and it was called Nights of Madness. And I was, I think it was, uh, I was either in the first or second row, and my eyes landed on these lovely ladies here. I in, bet they did. That. They did. So how old did you say you were there when you when it first took? Uh, oh, probably about uh, 17, 16. 16, 16 years yeah. old. Good yeah, don't want to give too much away. Don't, don't give too much away. No. Uh, so you started collecting those uh, Go magazines, about 17 or 18. Uh, and, and then what, the curiosity just took hold? Well, there was very little on offer at the time. Not to mention the fact that I was skin. Yeah. Uh, and so the most I could afford was that one, a, a spec, one and threepence, which is what? Uh, spec? Five, no. six, about seven P, you know, but it seemed like a fortune. Whoops, excuse Whoops, me. Whoops, whoa, easy, fingers shaking. Yeah, that's right. But memories, memories. Uh, <laughs> so, I don't know spec, about that. These magazines came out in 1953, and the, the basic attraction of them was they, they featured the girl next door in her okay. undies. In her undies? Yeah. Okay, do you want to show it? Can you show us a frame there? Yes, certainly well, can. Well, wow. here we are. Hang on. Do. Yeah, well, on, don't look for a good one. Just yeah, they, are, uh, they are, gentlemen. There we go. Yeah, just thank you. Nice. That's yeah, nice. Yeah, nice. Mm. OK, OK, that's lovely. Right. Uh, what are your favourite, then, of, of the magazines you've got here? I understand there's a favourite three you've got. Oh, there. yeah, yeah. Um, this is one that came out in the... Um, a typical American one that came out in the... Uh, there's 50s. a magazine there, Wink. Typographic yeah, error, Wink. Yeah, Wink. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. And uh, it's the cover art, for starters. The cover art's fantastic. I mean, this, this must be quite it's collectible. I mean, very they collectible are. these days. Yeah. Well, we'll see. yeah, they've all latched onto this business. Latched on? Latched onto it, That's a good wordplay. And then the type of models inside, he quickly thumbs through, taking time. It's well thumbed. Well thumbed, yeah. I'm talking this, about the magazine. These, these kind, this kind of style, I really like. Nice-looking women. Nice outfits, you know. Yeah. Nothing sleazy and nasty. Nothing sleazy about that whatsoever. But very tasty. OK, what's your next favourite? Come on. And then this is a typical of example. Mid-60s, this is American Nylon Jungle. Nylon, Nylon jungle. jungle! Do you know what? That, if, you're, no. if you've got a band at the moment and it's unnamed, <laughs> you can't go wrong with Nylon Jungle, frankly. For a band... It would certainly attract a lot of attention. <laughs> <laughs> you can't argue from with that. Many really quarters, can't. Yeah, 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 from many really. quarters, yeah, from many quarters, yeah, right. And and these had sort of um, this concentrated on the underwear, and there we are. Well, yeah, not just on the underwear. Look, she's concentrating on her temperature. Well, there, that was a bit, you know, mm, a bit uh, iffy at the time. Daring, daring. Yeah. But uh, the main thing was the was the the outfits and very shapely way uh, women wearing them. Okay. 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 Now, now, what's this one here? This is this girls' uniform. Yeah, this is an odd one coming right up to date. Yeah. Um, and the only reason I'm keen on this is that. A, the model is, is, she's a current model, Claudia Casali. Yes. She's been on Michael uh, well, Barron's show. I wouldn't show. quite open this one up, because I think there's some quite... No, I the, would say the, the shots phrase, inside but... tend to be a little bit, um, you know, <laughs> <laughs> explicit, is the yeah, word. That, yeah. Yeah. yeah, But, but um, why is it a favourite? Her and the outfit. She, she, she's got the right figure to show off these um, underwear. You know, okay. Vintage underwear, old fashioned okay. underwear. What's the most, what's the most valuable... Um... <laughs> I love how you've made this into much more of an interest. Uh, yeah. Sort of, it's very old period underwear, and I'm loving yeah, it. Yeah, I'm keen really. on that. Keen on yeah. that. Yeah, it's all those aunts, you know, those aunts in their corsets and things. Um, okay, um, which is right. which is worth the most then? Well, well, this is one. Um, this is Betty Page, who's become a. Whoops! Uh, I'll tell you what, mate. I don't know. You can keep hold of it. Yeah, it has become a cult item. Yeah, uh, an icon is the word, isn't it? Yeah. So Betty Page. How much is? How much do you pay for that? Well, I paid 50p. 
Yeah, and how much is it um, worth, do you reckon? Oh, well over £100 now. But well, you know, I think yeah, Justin yeah. Preston's here. Justin, come in, mate. Whoa! Yeah, no. uh, Justin oh, Preston, he's got a staggering collection of about 10,000 mags. What's the deal with... First, Happy New Year, Justin. Happy, Happy New Year. Year. It's getting hot in there, I'll tell you. Lovely. <laughs> uh, Justin, what's the deal with the uh, old uh, girly mags? We've got to be very quick, but go on. Well, I mean, if, if, funnily enough, the reason that they're collectible mainly is for the covers, and not necessarily for people who want to look at the magazines. It's if it's got a Dalek on, or if it's got James yeah. Bond articles oh, yeah. in, right. stuff like that. I mean, I've actually got some porn mags at home, or some girly mags at home, <laughs> that, uh, but they've got James Bond articles in them, and one of them's oh, worth 75 quid. You're just the because guy who Bond. reads them for yeah. that. No, absolutely, always for the content. <laughs> so how much do you think this whole collection's worth? 10,000 well, mags? <laughs> 10,000 oh, 10, mags, yeah, not oh, just the ones here. I mean, thousands and thousands. I mean, just the collection in the shed here has got to be worth over four figures. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I mean, there are some here that are worth yeah. over 100 quid each. Right. It's the cover art. Then you, you take. You look at that La Vie Parisienne over there. La Vie Parisienne. We'd rather exactly. not make it. French, the thing. <laughs> but the cover art. It's French. The cover art's <laughs> beautiful. Go on, then. Look at that. You know. 19... Hey, that really is that. Uh, but you know what, Johnny, now people no, are actually... You could give that to a child. <laughs> but yeah, people, exactly. are, people are collecting... the style to it, the style. People are collecting <laughs> the original artwork. Yeah. They go, they, they, people want this artwork, they actually know who the artists are, and they're not just buying the magazines, they're buying the artwork as well. No, it's wonderful, it's wonderful, I'm surprised. Uh, but are there, are there many are... female collectors? Female collectors? Funny, which is what I said. <laughs> <laughs> On that bombshell, uh, do you know what? This is the uh, the biggest breakfast ever. It's the Millennium Breakfast. I'm in the shed with about 10,000 girly magazine. And do you know what? It just feels Dalek. somehow right. There's a Dalek on that one. And that is collectible because of the Dalek. You've Doctor got to be seriously kinky. Yeah, I know some people are into animals. You, you, I've seen them on that disgusting Channel 4. You, but I'll tell you what, into Daleks. That's you, you, get, you get in your TARDIS and it's bigger than the size than you think. It's bigger out. Do you know what? Island P. Lamb, he's going to play us to the break. Here's Island, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> It's all I've done, I pray for you. The saints that we could to play, would you make my dream true? Just call my name, and I'll be right by your side. I Now to Giovanni Fatticino. <laughs> Where's my cards? <laughs> no beer. <laughs> Giovanni Faticino. Bene, molto bene, grazie, grazie, grazie. And I am Dime Valkyrie to Canada. Ah, that's uh, you know tonight is a very uh, is a very special night for everyone. And uh, most of all for my special friend the signore Tony Blair. He's a he's a good friend of mine. Eh? Uh, he said to me, Giovanni, I want to make a really great party for Milens. Uh, it must be very well organized by a top spinny doct with a lot of contracts. Uh, I also wanted a lovely classical music by the fame composer. <laughs> I say, Antonio, you wanted someone who can do it both? Get a Peter Mendelssohn. Oh. <laughs> grazie, grazie. Who are the critico for today's uh, performance? We've got three charmers. We've got the lovely Jamie, we've got the lovely Lee, and we've got the beautiful Gail. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, welcome, one, two. Are you ready with that? Happy New Year. Happy lovely. New Year. Now, I'm who's going to have hold of the, the gold stick? <laughs> <laughs> I'll have it old. Lovely. Oh. Hey, please, I know we've been going. Gail, I think. Or I think Jamie. I go on, go on. Lovely. Tonight, <laughs> we have I'm a great... I'm going to bring the car, I'm going to order. <laughs> Tonight we have a great inventions of the millennia based opera for you. Every verse he holds a clue to the name of a great invention of the millennia, so you must listen very carefully. Eh? Si. Every clue is a great invention of the millennia. See? Si. 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 Hello. Now, there's Good a teacher. lot of money resting on this, so we have to take it very seriously. It's all very well okay. swigging the fizz back there, Oliver. Gotcha. That's all I'm saying. Did they swiggy the fizz? He's swigging fizz. 
No swiggity. Okay, we go over now. I think you went to Richie Randall. He had the... No Richie, who you have here? Oh, look Hello at there. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Who you got there? Richie, yeah, where are you? Oh, uh, we are in the lovely Coventry. Oh, we've sent him to Coventry. Who have you with you? You've got Catherine, Ron and Mark, haven't you? You got it right. Right. Uh, well, let's... Uh, how are, who's this at the end, the other side? Catherine's right. Ah, Mark. Mark. Hey, you see there. the way he barked there and nothing <laughs> happened? So that is obviously Ron. But you, my love, and Catherine. I'm only doing this to annoy you, Richard Randall. <laughs> We can do this all every day. Okay, here we go. Right. Okay. Sorry, into character. Uh... I'm presuming you three are heavily in debt, but we don't want to know how much. So how long in minutes and seconds will it take our critics to guess ten inventions from our operatic verses? Okay, I want you to poise, have a little think. Takes quite a while to get it out. Everyone's been drinking very, very heavily. For me. Okay. Yeah, Catherine, you're wondering. Else? Right, when you're ready, just jot it down. Mark, don't dilly-dally, buddy. Get on with it. For Christ's sake, I can't bear the tension. <laughs> it's driving me mad. We're all ready. Good on you. Good on you, guys. Lovely. They are ready. Thank you, God. <laughs> OK, here we go. <clears throat> <sighs> Come on. Take it away, please. This transport's very quick But it might make you sick Lose lunch in a small loo Then lose all your bags too Who is it? British Rail No, it's not this no. Do you know, how many have they got to get right? That was an airplane, The invention okay. there was the airplane Let's make it five Okay, okay. here we go <laughs> It's ten Showered. This can's gas powered. Increase your sexy charms by spraying it on the air. Deodorant. Yeah. Aerosol deodorant is okay. Aerosol deodorant. Here we go. Hooray. 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 Pen. The viral pen is alright. Yes. Thank you so much again for help oh, us for oh. getting it right. Thank you. Oh, oh you're charming. You. Sorry. Okay, here. My great grandfather Bob sticks, sticks this inside his gob. They don't... Oh, they're ready. Go on with the answer. Shout them out. What was it? A lot of money on it. What do you say? False teeth. False teeth is alright. Okay. This is better. You get Gail. the idea. It is so smashed. Okay. <laughs> Here's one you all should know. Small steel thin in a row. They close and open, but this is really shut. Uh, uh, uh. No? No. Uh, come on, this is KY jelly. No, it's not a KY. The zip is correct. I would give him the point for KY. No. You threw that too hard then. Good for a laugh or two. As the office and Christmas do. Show off parts really seen. By using this glass top machine. Uh, photocopier. Yes, yes. Photocopier! Oh, thank you, Gordon, for Gail. OK. Oh. Nice one, Gail. Circle covered plastic sheet Keeps parcels safe, safe and neat Pop this invention <laughs> No. What? <laughs> uh, those bubble wrap... Uh, yeah, it's a bubble wrap! Yeah. Oh, well, I'm in mean, you, Miss Porter! Yeah. <laughs> hoo -ha. These things will put you right Driving your car Sounds rather unkind. Feline has gone blind. blind. Driving oh, your car. Easy, isn't it? What is it then? Hey? <laughs> Feline has gone blind in no, the road. No, you drive the car. You light up into the road. Cat's eyes. Oh. Yay! Yay! Okay. <laughs> this made mum. 
securing a nappy. Many of them. Safety pin. Oh, yes, safety let's go. pin's right. Yay! Christ, how long did this take? Not safe. Thank you, God, it is eight and a half hour choice. How long is going to bloody take Come it? On. OK. They're granules, small and brown. Boil the careful, drink it down. Coffee. Coffee? <laughs> it's enough, it's good. It is coffee, yes! Yeah. It's, it's, it's instant coffee. But anything you say is right now. <laughs> Last one, if you get it. This fits snug in your hand. You speak across the land. But when whitey airs him. BFI breaking up. Ah, it's easy, isn't it? Mobile phone? Yeah. It's mobile, mobile phone, phone. you're right. Yeah, it'll pull it. We love you. Is it 10? Yeah. That was 10. I think it's a little bit less. Yeah. It's 10, OK. What is it? What is the time? 3.59. 3.59. Richie, don't mess about or I kick you up the ass. So tell me, please, show me all the results now. OK, we've got 1 minute 24. No. We've got 1 minute 46. No. And then the guy on the end has got 1 minute 50 seconds, so he's the winner. It's Mark. Well done, Mark. Mark it out. He go on Richie Randall private jet. He come down here because later on today, you see, you would owe anything. You could not owe anything. How much do the losers owe? Please tell us, Richie. Ah, uh, let's have a look. How much did you owe first of all? Catherine owed sixty-two thousand one hundred. Well, oh. it's a big deal. Ron owed forty-four thousand. Cool. Uh, well, sorry about that. Thanks very much for playing. And later on, I'm going to let you have a look at my two really big debts. <laughs> It's a good. Oh, it's wow. good, but it's not good enough, is hey, it? You know, I think we're going to take a little break now. Am oh, I wrong? Thank the Lord. <laughs> no! Know, I think it's a bigger break he got. Have a looky. Now, your, uh, your job almost, really, is uh, collecting fossilised turds. Yeah, that's a, that's a big part of what I do, yeah. Is it a big job? <laughs> pretty big, pretty big. <laughs> and you brought the biggest I, ever fossilised turd with us today. I've got all sorts of things for you. The first thing I got is yeah. this one. Uh, this is Anglo, Anglo-Saxon dog dropping. <laughs> you, you can see which way it came out, because it came out that way, and the bottom <laughs> trees round. And well, the... I know, don't you think, well, we quick. this is such a good thing, let's yeah. stick with it. Uh, how... How does that happen? How does that become well, possible? I'm not absolutely certain about it, but it, it's a bit like the same process that happens on pavements today, yeah. that they dry out and the bone in them changes. How shape. old is that? That's about 1,500 years old, that one. Are they hard? Hey, come on! Oh, sorry. You shouldn't eat my turds. I mean, oh, that's disgraceful. Oh, it's a thousand-year-old human excrement. Yeah. This, this, is, this is what we call amorphous. <laughs> amorphous human uh, excrement or fecal <laughs> concretion and it's it doesn't look like much it's just a lump of stuff but if you look at it under a microscope you can see eggs of worms white wiggly worms <laughs> that lived inside people's guts uh, today they're warming up with uh, for the big event where they're tucking into a, a dry tea bag uh, some liver <laughs> and some lard okay so uh, good luck go for it <laughs> <laughs> hold it in, hold it in. Oh, <laughs> Look at Eddie's hands shaking. I would be too. <laughs> Good, son. Whoa. Oh, he's going. I'm good. Go, go into the, um, into the bin. Think, think. Oh, Eddie's finished. Eddie's the winner. Yeah. So why'd you start eating cat food? Well, I was just curious what my cats eat, so uh, it was close to Christmas. I got myself a, a Shiba Christmas menu. I didn't like that one because it was kind of tough meat, so I got me uh, whiskers for kittens. I like that one very much. And that's how the whole thing started. I've tested, I've, I've personally tested more than 30 types of cat food now. Cat food is like a fine wine. Open it, smell it, no, taste no. it, and appreciate it. Fruitcake? <laughs> yeah. We've made you a spaghetti Shiba And do you know what's yeah. disturbing is it smells exactly like spaghetti bolognese I had yeah, yesterday. Yeah. I think that's the parmigiano. Uh, they were just going to take that. Just talk us through the, the fine points of that. No. Well, it's basically a plain spaghetti and the sauce Shiba is made out of onions, garlic, smashed tomatoes and the um, rabbit flavoured Shiba. Rabbit flavoured Shiba. Rabbit flavoured Shiba, that's it. Yum. It, it really is, isn't it, as well? You're going to... No. Mm. Mm. Okay. Uh, nuts? <laughs> <laughs> You've got uh, Shiba with rabbit and chicken. 
Uh, we've got the uh, kitty cat in jelly with duck and turkey. Yum. Wow. <laughs> and you've got a uh, super meat, whiskers super meat with rabbit. Which one of those three would you eat straight My favorite tea? is the uh, rabbit flavored Shiba. Okay, do you, you want, want me to, to yeah, test on, it? Oh, okay. Oh, I've never tested the British. Can I just say here, remember, Mr. Kitts is a loony. Please don't <laughs> try this at home. Do soft. not try this at home. I think I'm going to. I'm going to. Very I'm, soft I'm, meat. Oh, oh my God. Oh, oh, I hope some of you were just eating a bit of. Uh, oh dear. I just. You know, I think I'm going to. I think I'm going <laughs> to. It makes me want to blow some chunks, I tell you. Here we go. Neon shoe, he's going to swallow it. Take it away, sir. Oh, my word, and, and you can see it coming through his throat. That's disgusting. Don't try this at home, kids. Do not try this at home, kids. I'm joined by sprightly 80-year-old Terry Hunt, who's just won, uh, and you're not going to believe this, the International net Nettle Eating Competition in oh, Devon. Don't eat nettles. <laughs> you don't eat nettles. That's one of the things you think you learn as a child. You not my guest that. here today. He's chomped his way through an incredible 34 foot of nettle. Oh. Yeah. Good God, Terry, eat one back. Don't yeah. try this at home. Don't eat nettles at home. Just eat one like that. Well, that's no problem, man. Oh, oh my word. Oh. They're live, those ones. Oh, it doesn't matter to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can tripe ever be trendy? Some people say this show is awful. Today it really is, because look at this. We are surrounded by a gorgeous tripe. It's all cow's innards and lower bowels and intestines and stuff. <laughs> what is it doing? That's all right. Is it good? No. <laughs> This is the Lloyd's Bank turd. It's yeah. 1,200 years old. It's the oldest known. It's the biggest known. Let's see it. It's the best lump of mineralized, preserved human extra I've ever come across in my entire life. OK, let's see it. Yeah. 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 This is a, mag a really magnificent <laughs> specimen. It really is superb. <laughs> Wonderful. What a cracking turd it, that is. It is. <laughs> Now, there are, there are people who reckon they can determine whether this is from a man or a woman. But one thing is quite clear, is this chap must have had a very big breakfast. <laughs> now, Yuzo... Yuzo is going to put a, a live scorpion... Uh, Gizzo, that is in fact a live scorpion. It's not rubber. Uh, don't do that at home. Uh, don't. Uh, kids, adults, anybody, don't do it at home because it will end your life. That is a poisonous reptile. And if you stuck it in his gob! Gizzo! Gizzo, quick! Quick! What are you doing first today? Roman fish sauces. In Roman times, 2,000 years ago, people had a tremendous liking for exotic fish sauces. So we're going to make a modern version of it? We are. What do we need? We're going to use a tin of, tin of anchovies, yeah, hey. which we'll just stick oh, in here. Yes, That's lovely. the main, most important ingredient. <laughs> then we'll slop in some uh, uh, grape juice. Yeah, why not? You can use wine, Good but well. we're using uh, grape juice. <laughs> wine, we'll maybe. put a, a decent smattering of salt, because this is really important, because it's like a flavour enhancer. Okay. And then we'll put some uh, oregano in here, like that. Put the top on and give it a quick blast, I hope. OK, quick blast. Yeah, OK. Okay, now, what have we got here? We've got a traditional Roman salad. It stinks. Wow. No, this, this is really nice. This Doesn't is, it stink, though? No, no, no this, this is delicious. This is, this is cheese it's and pine... It's real This is not. This is wonderful. It's pine nuts, cheese and honey. So you ought to have a taste and see what it's like. Come on. Go on, just have a little bit there. I'll have a bit too. <laughs> Delicious, but it will be greatly improved. It, it, absolutely, you've got it in one. So let's put some of this on here and see what this is like. Just a, a little bit like that. You don't want too much. I'm sure, that's fine now. It's a, a flavour enhancer. Come on, here we go. Okay then. Mmm. Yeah. Hey. Now listen. Now, isn't that wonderful? Isn't it's it good? Fantastic. Goodbye. <laughs> Hello. Now, my next guest is no stranger to the show. He's been used to more to grilling more guests than being grilled himself, and for the last two and a half years, he has been the linchpin of the big breakfast. Quite unbelievably, I was certainly am amazed at that. This is his first ever TV interview ever, 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 and he's promised to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please welcome Mr Johnny Vaughan. Thank you very much, Liz. I might bullshit a little bit. 
Only a little bit. Well, I think that's to be accepted. That's, that's quite acceptable. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And actually, I have done one little interview once before where I briefly cooked on the Gloria Hunniford show. What did you cook? I just wanted to meet her. Did you? Yeah, I can't remember what we cooked in the end, but it was... Uh... What was your fascination with uh, Gloria, then? I'd heard she's quite short. Was it as simple as that? Yes. And it, and Isn't it funny, that on a sport yeah. level, things like that are the things you need to know? Yeah, it just looks so cosy and sort of quite a nice atmosphere. So, so I went down there. So, But anyway, I didn't reveal Judith anything Chalmers, like we're going to reveal here. Christ. Judith Chalmers hold the same sort of thrill for Ever you? since I found out she didn't wear pants. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's news to me. So how did you manage to avoid doing a big TV interview thus far? Well, obviously, when, you work, when we work on The Big Brecky, we're pretty open about our lives anyway and what mm. we kind of do in a sort of shallow breakfast way. So I'm kind of there every morning telling them about my life. And I just think it's a bit odd when you, when you host shows. I always think it's a bit really odd thing to see hosts as guests. I just yeah. always think it's something quite weird. It's often like, uh, sometimes on Have I Got News For You, they get, or Shooting Stars, they get like a host on there. And suddenly they're a panellist, and it's just, or, or being interviewed, it's just a, a sort of odd thing. It's, I don't know what it is, but it's something. Yeah, I can understand that, though, because you are giving yourself, I don't know, giving yourself away in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we don't. We're pretty back. open, aren't we? Yeah, really? I think so. Yeah, yeah that's probably We're why. not liars. Do you know, I'll tell you why, because there's never been an interviewer good enough, Lisa, and now there is. Oh, I really like you. So, you said there's no subject area that was off limits, and we've had yeah. a huge response from the viewers. Are you still happy to answer anything? Absolutely. Well, yeah, within reason, not sort of, you know, dreary stuff. If it's no, I won't. Chipper. Legally, I have to ask you that. OK, nice one. <laughs> OK, I'm going to start, quite largely, with prison. Ah, the big ass. Prison. Oh. Uh, well, the hottest topic was prison, of course, so we're going for it. So, was it the hottest topic on the net when they asked? Uh, well, I think it probably was, wasn't yeah, it, really? Yeah. Because it's intriguing, because the majority of people haven't been to prison. Yeah. So, did you think you deserved it? Uh, not, well, it's hard to say. It's hard to say whether you deserve anything or not. You know, it, at the time, you know, when you get in the trial, and that's the trouble when people go on trial, they start thinking of, rather than thinking whether they're innocent or guilty or deserve it or not, all you're thinking about really is getting off. Yeah. Uh, so you can become very self-righteous and sort of think, gosh, it's ridiculous. At the end of the day, you know, it, 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 however, my, however cajoled or pressured I was into what I was involved with, uh, have my, and peer pressure is a you know a hard thing when everyone's. Um, you, I probably did, I was weak. It was a moment of weakness, and there definitely was a time when I had the time to say no and walk away. If I'd been but a the if, peer if it, group thing, you were going to look small yeah, in front of the It's a terrible lads. thing. It's a terrible thing. Once you don't become responsible for your own actions because the situation sweeps you up, yeah. and you don't even stop to analyse. You don't realise. And this is interesting when you actually go to jail. You don't realise. You just meet loads of people there who are in generally just particularly a lot of the violent offenders for a tiny moment that just a tiny lapse of judgment that then affects the rest of their lives and that's what jail's really full of as well as some people who got caught uh, sorry obviously a lot, a lot of people could have been in jail I mean the crime as they saw there is getting yeah. caught but just how many people you meet there it's just one moment and they tell you their story and you can see this moment of weakness when they did something terrible when they weren't thinking about it. and that's kind of what everyone but were the people is. all right in there they were nice to you yeah they were i mean i, I tell you what it teaches you actually kind of two things really about human nature when you're in jail first thing is this is what it taught me apart from teaching me things about myself yeah because uh, you've got no props no friends all those things you kind of not high behind but you can yeah. make you what you are in the outside world uh, and i think the things i learned there was firstly that people who've done absolutely horrendous things can also be, be really charming people and it's odd that those sort of two instincts or those two traits can reside in the same human side by side. You can have someone who's just done something awful and violent or a, a, a terrible gangster who's done something, and yet they can sit down and you wouldn't even know it. You have to have a real laugh with them. So that's the first thing, teaching you that in all humans, just because someone has been a monster, doesn't mean they're a monster 24 hours a day. They walk around being a monster. They did a monstrous act. I don't say this as defence, I just say this as what I found. Yeah. And the other thing is, is when you start, is that actually... Uh, and it, it'll sound a really strange thing, uh, but, but I thought that a lot of the people in jail, uh, it, it was, Britain has a big jail population, of, you know, for its mm. proportion of people that are there. And it shows you at least a lot of people there were in there, particularly sort of, I don't know, some thieves or whatever. I've got to be qu quite careful what I say here, obviously. Because mm. uh, they'll be watching, obviously. Yeah, because they might Actually, be... will they? I don't know. Do they have tellies there? Don't they? I don't know, well, they didn't in my day. But I get what they do now, you know, <laughs> oh. a bit softer now, you know. <laughs> uh, but that, um, it sort of shows you that people aren't prepared to be sheep, a lot of them. 
And a lot of them, you know, you, you know, there's a lot, you know, like on the pay-per-view, we go through those crimes that are, you know, part of you sort of says, that is genius, that kind of, to think this, to outthink the system like that, even though it's major fraud. Uh, so some people there, you've got to admire their guile and their sort of ability not to be sheep. Uh, and just, um, I, mean, I think, what is more sinister? A society where no one breaks the law at all and everyone obeys. Or a society with, you know, a criminal Except element. And I think, actually, mm. a society where there's not a criminal is slightly more sinister. It's kind of Disneyland sinister, which is, you know... Yeah, so what's going on behind the yeah. scenes? Yeah. The other thing, of course, is that all victims are not necessarily good people. Uh, and you discover that in jail, which is a very tidy kind of microcosm of the world. And you discover that, you know, a lot of the people who've been in for bashing someone up or whatever, that was, it wasn't a pretty nice person they bashed up. Doesn't make the, cr and, you know, doesn't make the, the crime, crime less, good however. or less. But it sort of teaches you that. And it's the same on the world scale when you see sort of the UN steaming in to help people who are victims. And yet, when it's turned around, those same people who we kind of bail out are just as cruel and just as dreadful. So those are sort of the two main things, that amazingly differing traits can reside in the same human and that all victims aren't necessarily good people, which we automatically presume. OK, so, then. And moving on quite swiftly, you spent a couple of Christmases there, didn't you? Yeah, I was very unlucky, actually, because I was, I was, sentenced, I was sentenced on December the 2nd, 1988, and I came out on January the 30th just offhand, yeah. 1991. Uh, so I actually spent three Christmases and New Year's in jail. Was it a dreadful time? I, I mean, so, so depressing. I, I actually had the, the lowest point of my life was when I was transferred suddenly out of Leicester prison and I was taken just out of my job and I was just, well, it was a nice number in the kitchen, lovely, £5.65 a week, lovely. And I was just taken to Lincoln Prison, which is, I've got to tell you, he's, he's, he's a really bad one. And uh, no one knew where I was. I was on a bus with this... There was two of us on a bus with 14 prison officers. And he was a mad Scotsman. And he was just up there, manacled both sides, going, Come on, Vonnie! Are you with me? And I'm like, well, not quite, mate. You know, we're not, no, not I'm not. Good. We're not sort of that good friends. And we arrived at this jail, and it was just like, two days before Christmas. And none of my family knew where I was. None of my mail was going to get to me. I was just in this cell, this, this cell with this bloke who um, was actually a very nice chap, but he did have a nasty habit of taking his false teeth out to suck pies. No. And he then used to put his, his teeth on the bed. And he used to just suck pies. Which, you know, oh. Anyway, and I cleaned my shirt. I washed my shirt because I was expecting a visit some stage. I wanted to have a clean shirt and I had this wet shirt on because they wouldn't let me go down to exercise without a shirt because that's what the dogs are trained to go for, is the stripy shirts. You always right. have to wear them when you're walking around in circles for an hour. And uh, I was just walking around in, a, in an exercise yard. I'm not kidding, it was the size of Wales. And it was just like a real wind there. It was cold. I was just wearing Lincoln, a wet shirt. Flat I was thinking, no one knows I'm here. I didn't have parole at the time and I had another about two and a half years to go. And honestly, it was just it was such a low point. But actually, it's good to have those because only when you're in those kind of pits of despair you know how great it is to be up there again you know yeah. it's 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 only that that you know you can get any kind of greatness from i think thank you for that i'm going to lighten it right up i'll tell you one thing though so someone on. someone really nice thing sarcastically on one christmas day because i did also have a lot of laughs in prison mm. and one of the things that uh, the great mental editor does is take out bad memories and boredom because they're too boring to, to remember, remember yeah. you can't remember waiting for a bus so that it makes you feel bored yeah because it's too boring to remember so actually because there's so many identical days the mental editor just kind of takes out the 20 days in between two funny incidents. And you're left actually looking back thinking, yeah, I had a few laughs there. And I remember one time, uh, Christmas Day, I put a sock on my cell door. <laughs> sarcastically, like a stocking for Santa. Yeah. And, uh, and I put it on the cell door. And in the morning, when we opened up, I saw my sock there. I went inside it. And a prison officer had been doing night duty had put a cigarette in it. So it was quite a sort of, at the time, it was like, wow. That's really nice. Yeah, it was a really sort of weird Hats thing, but I sort you, of thought, you are. there is a Santa, you know, it was a nice sort of thing. Right, moving into big breakfast questions. Lots of people want to know how long you're going to stay on the Big B. Well, I love the Big Breakfast, and I love morning television anyway. I mean, I think in the morning, we have the advantage of we're all competing against each other. We really are. Every channel, every radio station is doing their review of the world. British people, for some reason, when they get up in the morning, they have this thing like, what's happened? What's happened overnight? Who's died? What's happened? Is there a war? What's happened? Everyone wants to know why papers are, are bigger here than just about any other nation. Because everyone wants to check in and find out what's happened. And uh, I think we really have that 
kind of re instant reaction. I think in America, they're late, they have late-night chat shows where they want to see what's happened at the end of the day. Yeah, and we want to know Which we never quite have. They've tried it, they've never quite have it. Every morning, we get two hours of pretty well to say and do what you want within okay, parameters. Okay, right, okay. And it's, uh, I, now I that you're married, I'm sorry to... Um, you know what's happening in my ear. Um, you can turn that talk back off, thank you very much. And uh, now that you're married, is your life completely, completely perfect? It's been a bit hectic, actually, this year. It's been really, really hectic. You know, I've, I've moved house, got married. We did the Christmas pre-records, it's always hectic. Sorry, gang. Uh, we did the, uh, you know, I did the film show. I've, I've, as you know, I write films with Eddie Allen, and we've mm -hmm. got a, sort of quite a good, you know, film writing deal coming up. I've got um, Horrible, my sitcom, coming up next year as well. I have to do my cider ads. Uh, you know, it's, it's really has been a bit too much this year. I've, I've, towards the you end of it... You out, bud. Yeah, towards the end of it, I think I've really... I've, 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 I've sowed a bit too much. However, you won't this year. I think it's going to be a great year I'm going to you. Do you know, I'm going to, one of my years resolutions is to try and say no a bit. Because if someone comes up to me and they're enthusiastic, I just can't help saying, yeah, I'll do it. They come up, they go, I love what you do. Would you do this? And yes. you can't go... No, a piss off. <laughs> you, you just can't do it. So, uh, you know, I, I've got to just sort of... Learn right, to OK, say nice I'm going to ask you some very quick questions. I've already been told to wrap it, so okay. I'm going to ask you them. I want okay. quick-fire answers from you, okay, no I'm thinking. Good at quick OK, favourite biscuit from an assortment? Uh, uh, Bourbons. Bourbons, nice call. Cool. When did you last cry? Uh, when did I last cry? Uh, uh, watching that driving... Oh, no, when I, got, when I was married. Really? When I was married and I did my speech. And I, and I cracked up lovely. doing the words to you're the best thing. Uh, the oh, best don't. I, went, I really went. Me and, oh, yeah, that was lovely. Who would you like to kiss from EastEnders or Coronation Street, past and present? Uh, oh, Bette Lynch. Uh, Bette Lynch. In about the mid-70s, when she wore the cheetah skin uh, trousers to take Ken Barlow, no, Mike Baldwin, back up to her room. <laughs> OK. Goes, Not a lot of fellas get up here. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Favourite colour? Uh, blue. Blue is the colour. Football is the game. We're all together. <laughs> yeah, and Chelsea is your yeah. team. If you could meet anyone in the world, who would it be? Past, present. Uh, anyone in the world, anyone Part in from the, the world. past and present. Yeah. Uh, Lord George Paget. <laughs> lovely, lovely answer. Worst interview ever. Worst interview ever. Willem Dafoe. The first interview I ever did, and I didn't realise that he has. He's apparently, allegedly, quite well hung. And I asked him why he could never play Robin Hood, and he said, <laughs> "Why couldn't I play Robin Hood?" I looked down on my question cards, and it said, and it said. He has a, apparently he has a massive chopper, would look strange in tights. Lovely. And the interview had gone so badly, he goes, why couldn't I play Robin Hood? And I've looked down and seen that. Uh... And I thought, I can't say, you've got a massive chopper. <laughs> <laughs> really and well just tell, he OK, out. if the answer is love, what is the question? Uh, I, I don't know. What's the answer? While he thinks about that, it is about to be New York New Year. Can you let's imagine that? It. We're going to have to go to that. But I am going to carry on grilling him right here. So let's go to ITN for the latest whatever. OK, here is the news at just a minute to five on Saturday, the 1st of January. Straight away, we're going over live to watch the famous ball drop in Manhattan's Times Square, where New Yorkers are about to start spreading the news. Well, for a change, they're lagging behind us, but they're just about to catch up with the rest of the world. And they're going to join us in the new century. It's estimated that you're one in a billion watching these pictures live from Times Square. It's an event which New Yorkers modestly describe as the global celebration at the crossroads of the world. Tens of thousands of people have waited in the square for more than 24 hours for the occasion. And they were rewarded with performances by hundreds of dancers and actors. And, of course, the dropping of that giant ball. They've dropped one into Times Square every year since 1907. And this one has been shining there throughout the day. It's a massive six feet in diameter, weighs 1,070 pounds and has six hundred light bulbs in it.